Have you ever truly considered how you know what you know? It seems like a simple question, but the answer, like most things worth exploring, is deceptively complex. Today, we're diving headfirst into the intricate workings of the human mind, guided by the brilliant and often overlooked cybernetician Warren McCulloch. You might be thinking, cyber what? Don't worry, we'll get there. And McCulloch, ever the maverick, found his answers in unexpected places. He looked to the humble frog. Now you might be thinking, what could a frog possibly tell us about the human brain? But McCulloch, with his visionary insight, saw a profound connection. He realized that the frog's eye, the way it processes visual information, held crucial clues to the workings of the brain itself. He studied how the frog's eye detected edges, movement, even prey. And he discovered something astonishing. The frog's eye wasn't simply transmitting an image to the brain. It was already performing complex computations, filtering and processing information before it even reached the brain. This realization was a revelation. It challenged the prevailing view of the brain as a passive receiver of information and hinted at the incredible complexity hidden within its structure. McCulloch called this radical concept the anastomotic brain. Anastomosis, a fancy word, I know but it essentially describes the intricate network of interconnected waterways in a river delta. And this is where his analogy truly takes shape. Just like a delta's channels constantly diverge and merge, carrying sediment and shaping the landscape, McCulloch envisioned the brain as a dynamic, interconnected network of neurons, each one influencing and being influenced by countless others. Think about that for a moment. Every experience, every sensation, every fleeting thought is like a raindrop falling onto the mental landscape of your brain. These raindrops, your experiences, don't just disappear. They flow, they gather momentum, they carve out paths forming rivulets, then streams, and eventually the mighty rivers of knowledge and understanding. But it's more than just the flow of information. It's the way it interacts, the way it combines and recombines, that truly fascinated McCulloch. And this is where we'll delve into the mind-bending concept of circular causality in the next. Hold on to your hats, folks, because here's where we enter the realm of circular causality. A concept so profound, so counterintuitive, that it still boggles minds today. You see, we're used to thinking in linear terms, cause and effect. A leads to B, B leads to C, and so on. Nice and straightforward, right? But the brain, that beautiful, messy river delta in your skull, doesn't play by those rules. It throws a curveball, a mind-bending loop-de-loop right into the heart of causality. Let me explain. Remember how those raindrops, your experiences, flow through the river delta of your mind? Well, here's the catch. The rivers themselves can change the landscape. They can erode old channels, carve new pathways, even create entirely new lakes of understanding. In other words, the way you process information shapes your future experiences. And those future experiences, in turn, further mold and refine your understanding. It's a continuous feedback loop, a dance between cause and effect where each step influences the next, and the very notion of a starting point becomes meaningless. Think about learning a new language. At first, it's a jumbled mess of sounds, a chaotic flood of unfamiliar words, but gradually, as you immerse yourself, as you form connections and recognize patterns, those rivers of language begin to carve out distinct channels in your mind. You start to think differently. You notice subtle nuances, cultural references you never would have grasped before. Your understanding of the language shapes your experience of the culture and vice versa. It's a beautiful, self-reinforcing cycle. But it's not just language. This principle of circular causality applies to everything you do, every interaction you have, every thought that flits through your consciousness. Your past experiences influence your present perceptions, which in turn shape your future actions and the experiences you attract. And around and around it goes, this intricate, self-perpetuating dance of cause and effect, blurring the lines between past, present, and future. It's enough to make your head spin, isn't it? But for McCulloch, this wasn't just an abstract concept. It was the key to unlocking the secrets of intelligence itself. Now, 
let's talk about those cybernetics again. Remember how I mentioned McCulloch wasn't just interested in the individual neurons, those raindrops of experience? He was fascinated by the big picture, the dams, the levees, the intricate systems of feedback and control that governed the flow of information through his metaphorical river delta. Think of it like this. Your brain isn't just a passive recipient of information. It's an active participant, constantly shaping and reshaping the very nature of its own knowledge. It does this through feedback loops. Imagine a thermostat, a simple yet elegant example of a cybernetic system. It senses the temperature of a room and adjusts the heating or cooling accordingly to maintain a specific, desired state. Your brain works in a similar way, although infinitely more complex. It receives information from the outside world through your senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and internal cues from your body. This information is constantly being compared against your existing knowledge, your memories, your goals, and desires. If there's a discrepancy, a mismatch between what is and what should be, your brain springs into action. It adjusts its internal models, reevaluates priorities, even triggers emotional responses all in an attempt to maintain a state of equilibrium, a sense of coherence within the ever-shifting landscape of your experience. Let's take an example. You learn something new that challenges your deeply held beliefs. This creates a kind of cognitive dissonance, a mental itch that needs scratching. Your brain, ever the efficient cybernetic system, has a few options. It can dismiss the new information as irrelevant, it can try to fit it into your existing framework, even if it requires some mental gymnastics. Or, and this is where things get interesting, it can trigger a complete paradigm shift, a fundamental restructuring of your beliefs to accommodate this new, unsettling data. This, my friends, is the power of the cybernetic brain in action. It's a constant dance between stability and change, between preserving existing knowledge and adapting to new information. And it's this very dance, this ongoing process of feedback and adjustment that allows us to learn, grow, and evolve as individuals. Here's where things get really interesting. McCulloch's River Delta analogy goes beyond just explaining how a single brain processes information. It opens up a whole new way of understanding individual differences, the beautiful tapestry of human experience. Because just like no two River Deltas are exactly alike, no two minds experience the world in the same way. Think about it. We all come into this world with a unique set of genes, a blueprint for our physical and mental development. But then, from the moment we're born, our experiences begin to shape the contours of our minds, just like the rain and rivers shape the delta over time. Every interaction with our parents, every book we read, every heartbreak, every triumph, every random encounter, they all leave their mark on the landscape of our minds. They carve new channels, deepen existing ones, create dams that block the flow of certain thoughts or burst open floodgates of emotion. This means that your unique life history, your joys and sorrows, your victories and defeats, they all contribute to the unique architecture of your mind. Your internal river delta becomes a reflection of your personal journey, a tapestry woven from the threads of your experiences. It's why what resonates deeply with one person might seem utterly meaningless to another. Why some people gravitate towards art while others find solace in science. Why some embrace risk while others seek security. It's all a reflection of our unique mental landscapes, the intricate patterns etched into our individual river deltas by the relentless flow of experience. And this, my friends, is where McCulloch's analogy takes on a profound philosophical dimension. It challenges us to recognize and appreciate the inherent subjectivity of human experience. It reminds us that there's no single right way to think, no universal truth waiting to be discovered. Instead, there are as many perspectives on the world as there are minds to perceive it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. I love hearing from you. So drop a comment below and let's keep the conversation going. Share this video with your friends to help spread the word. Thank you.